Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online divorce, valuation, and mediation services in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we will discuss divorce finances, tracing marital assets and separate property with Beth Garrett and Bob Boyd. Bob Boyd is a family law attorney in Atlanta, Georgia, and co-founder of Boyd, Collar, Nolan, Tuggle, and Roddenberry. Bob is a leader in family law who has received recognition from his colleagues across Georgia and the nation for his work in high net worth divorce litigation and contested custody cases. Beth Garrett is a lawyer and accountant in Atlanta, Georgia. She's also a partner in the divorce litigation support practice at Frazier and Dieter, primarily assisting high net worth individuals and corporate executives with divorce, tax, and accounting issues. She helps people through mediation and works with divorce, divorce lawyers through all financial aspects of litigation and child support matters. She's also a valuation expert and has a credential. Welcome, Beth and Bob. How are you? Even in tracing like an investment, right? And the, and the logic behind tracing an investment and how we do it, um, I think it is, you know, we're starting with that, that statement and then you're having to look at it over the course of time. You know, so in in that particular situation, it, is it necessary to have every monthly statement? Is it necessary to have every yearly statement? Like, it, you know, what if I don't have everything? Like, can you still do some analysis with that? Yeah, absolutely, depending on the account. So with a retirement account, um, it's it's rare. It, it definitely happens, but it's not common that somebody's taking withdrawals from a retirement account prior to retirement. So hopefully that account has just grown. So we can make some assumptions there that if they had a set amount when they got married and um, it's it's grown, we can at least start with that set amount, I think, unless there have been withdrawals. And there's a lot of different places that you can find out if there were withdrawals, not just the account um, statements. You can look at tax returns. Um, there's forms, the 1099R that comes with the tax return. So there's a couple other things with retirement accounts um, that we can look at. Um, and a lot of times if you are, if you have a 401k and the IRA is your premarital account, you might not have been contributing to that at all during the marriage. So it might be one that literally just kind of sat there. Now, it sounds like, Melissa, you and I have, you would ha you have to do a little more work on that because we do have, it is, a, I would say, established that um, investment in, with the exception of the day trader here and there, that that's literally what they do every day, that investment gains and losses and income and, or interest and dividends are passive. Um, so we wouldn't have to segregate out that stuff. I just look at the total growth in the account, whether it came from interest, dividends, capital gains, um, and that's all considered passive. But it sounds like you have to segregate that out a little bit. That Some of that might be marital. Um, would that be on a retirement account also? It is income on separate property is marital. Okay. Appreciation on separate property is still separate. So it, it does get nuanced, but here's the thing. I think people think that this is black and white, right? It's separate. It's marital. That's it. The reality is unless you have just been, unless you've planned ahead, right? Which we could tell them some ways to plan ahead, but unless you've planned ahead and kept everything very separate and clean, there's going to be gray, and so you have to put on a position and you have to see how much the documents support the position, right? Or else you're going to falter legally, right, Bob? I mean, I, I can't just put up a position with no underlying documents. And so right. I think that that's the harder thing is like, what if we don't have anything that goes back that far? You know, like how am I tax returns are good? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but what are the other options? And there may not be, um, but that's why you have to reach out from that standpoint, because the presumption is going to be that it's marital first, unless you prove otherwise. Right. That's right. Yeah. 
So, and you talked about planning. I, I've had many conversations with fathers uh, whose son or daughter is getting married and they have premarital wealth, but they don't want to do a prenup. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll say, well, how do I protect this, but not do a prenup? And frankly, we talk about the same things that we've talked about here is the paper trail and the don't commingle and uh, be careful what you do with uh, money you take out of the account and how you title it to acquire something. All of those kind of things that we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm.